Hello everyone, I'm Sheila Shafi and welcome back to Process Arc's channel where we provide you with digestible business insights. As we talked in an earlier video, there's certainly a lot of noise and information out there that makes it very difficult for us to sift through it all so that we can glean what's truly relevant and important. I'm talking about concepts like artificial intelligence, robotics, cryptocurrency, big data, agile, design thinking, lean, Six Sigma, and the list goes on and on. What we will do in future videos is take each of those concepts and dissect them down to the core so that we can better understand their intent, when to use them, and how to use them. In today's video, we're going to focus on the four most powerful problem-solving platforms, Lean, Six Sigma, Agile, and Design Thinking. For each of them, I will provide you an overview of their intent, their strengths and weaknesses, and most importantly, what I love about them. So hopefully you'll get an overview before we start digging down deeper into each one of them. So let's get started. Okay, everyone, here's the framework or the grid that we're gonna fill out together. At the very top, we've got the four most powerful methodologies, Six Sigma, Lean, Agile, and Design Thinking. And then on the other axis, we're gonna talk about the, what the intent of the methodology is, its strengths, weaknesses, and what I love about them. Alrighty, let's start with the, the intent of these methodologies. Six Sigma is really all about quality. It's, it was intended to improve the quality of products and services. Before we go forward, let me just define what quality means from a Six Sigma perspective. Six Sigma defined quality as building products and services that the customer wants, delivering it in a way that the customer prefers or expects, and pricing it at a point that they're willing to actually pay for it. That's quality in the world of Six Sigma, and as you can see, it's rather complex. So the, the issues that Six Sigma was meant to resolve were challenging and complex by nature. Now, let's take it to Lean. Lean's intent was always around improving the speed of processes, whether that is the process you use to deliver a product or service or processes that are between departments. It didn't really matter. It was just that any process that you wanted to choose, you wanted to work on, it would help predominantly by just increase its speed. Now, if you move on to Agile, its main focus was around expediting the product or service development cycle. So if you think about a large scale project that may take 18 months, Agile is supposed to help us break that into increments so that we're continuously working on developing that product of, or, or service. And that's very different from how products or services were historically developed where um, you know, you would have engineers go into a room for a year and work on building something and they, then they would come out and show it to everybody and then sometimes they would have issues with it. So Agile was again incremental iterative product development. Now design thinking was really around coming up with new ideas for products, process, or services. So it's incredibly strong with coming up with new ideas to overcome the challenges that we have. Now, before I give away any more, let me go down and talk about the strengths. Okay, the strength of Six Sigma. It is an incredibly formalized problem-solving platform. Because remember, it's trying to solve rather complex issues for an organization. So there has to be some level of formality with it. The other strength of Six Sigma, which somewhere it kind of got lost as it evolved or it got adopted by different organization, was that it was always about the customer. You may probably think of Six Sigma, if you've heard of it, as a cost reduction platform but that was not the intent of Six Sigma at all. Six Sigma was about going and listening to the voice of the customer or doing market research to understand what customers expect, want, or need, and then take that expectation, want, and need and embed it back into the products and services that we were offering. So that is the core or the strength of Six Sigma. Now, let's go to Lean. Because Lean has such a razor sharp focus on reducing waste within an organization or within a process so that it can expedite the delivery of a service or a product, by definition or by its nature rather, 
it, the toolkit is simpler and more elegant. So it's easier to kind of come up to speed with the methodology because its intent is again very focused. Agile strength is innovation through collaboration. It's saying, look, we don't expect one department like our IT department or HR on its own to come up with the next product or service that maybe either use internally within the company or externally with the customer. We have to, as an organization, to collaborate with one another to figure out what the best fit or what the best new product or service is that we need to be thinking about. So it's very collaborative and again, very iterative. It's saying if we're going to build something, let's build it in steps so we have checkpoints along the way that whatever it is that we're building actually meets the expectations and the desires of the people that defined it for us. So Agile kind of takes the pressure away from us that we absolutely have to get it right the first time. And that really is a strength of this methodology. Now, design thinking is incredibly powerful in the ideation phase. That means coming up with the new idea around the product, service, or process that we have in mind. And because, again, kind of like Agile, it's very collaborative, it is going to rely on the input of a cross-functional team that you will assemble within your organization to come up with these new ideas. Let's now go down to the weakness because with every strength, unfortunately, a weakness is going to pop up. With Six Sigma, when you have a methodology that is supposed to solve really complex issue with an organization, by definition, it's going to mean that there's some complexity in the methodology. So there are a lot of concepts and tools that are kind of jammed in into this one platform. Now, in future videos, we will take away some of the complexity, actually not some, quite a bit of that complexity, and focus on the fundamental or the core tools within it so that you can begin to practice the Six Sigma methodology immediately. But just know that that can be one of its weaknesses. Now, if we jump over to Lean, it's a, it's a different story. It lacks the formality that Six Sigma has. It lacks the structure that says, you first use this tool and then this tool, or you go from this step to this step. Because when Lean was developed, again, many moons ago, almost four or five decades ago, it assumed that you would have a master in place, a Shinga Jitsu master that would know the entire methodology in and out. And so that master was supposed to provide the guidance and the direction to the everyday lean practitioner. Now, when you don't have this Shinga Jitsu master within your organization, we have seen cases where it has wreaked havoc, meaning that people have used the tools and the approach and the methodology in an incorrect fashion, coming up with invalid results. So just know that, that Lean, again, incredibly powerful, wonderful platform. It inherently assumes you have bodies within your organization that have mastered the methodology that know when, how, and where best to use it. With Agile, again, I, I, I I've mentioned this before, we love these methodologies. I, I love all four of them. But Agile has weaknesses on two ends. On the front end, Agile assumes that the people that you're working with, that are, you're collaborating with, are going to have a pre, pretty keen idea of what needs to get built because you are to get your requirements from them. The Agile team gets the requirements of what they are supposed to build from other people. It's not them. The Agile team doesn't come up with it. The Agile team is responsible for taking those requirements and building the product and services in an iterative stage at every point, making sure that it meets the expectations of the people that define the requirements. So if we didn't do a good job of figuring out the problem of what exactly we're going to build, guess what? We're going to end up building cement life jackets. So that's kind of one of the weaknesses of Agile. On the other end of the spectrum with Agile, one of its weaknesses is that it doesn't have a really formalized way of figuring out how to operationalize the idea we just came up with. So fantastic, we came up with a wonderful software. How do we actually start to build it and scale it and take it to market? So that's another weakness on the other end of Agile. Because remember, the strength of Agile is around 
expediting the development process of an idea. Nobody said that it was also supposed to come up with the idea as well. When you go to design thinking, its strength, like I mentioned, is around ideation to come up with a new way or a new process, a new product or a new service, which means what? That the team you've assembled has the creative problem solving skills and the critical thinking skills to actually come up with those ideas. So there is an inherent assumption and hence an inherent weakness to the methodology. And also like Agile, it doesn't really have a formalized platform or a roadmap of how to take an idea that you've come up with and actually commercialize it. So that's it in terms of the four most powerful methodologies, four most well-known methodologies that are out there and what they're intended for, what the strength and the weaknesses are. Now let me talk to you about what I absolutely love about each one of them. Yes, it's been almost 20 years since I've been trained and certified in the Six Sigma platform. But I tell you guys, it's still my go-to platform for solving any kind of a business challenge that I'm faced with because it is incredibly formalized, but still flexible in coming up with the problem, the root causes, a solution, and a way to put things under control once a solution is implemented. So it's, it, there is a formality around how to go about problem solving. And that has really become my framework in the past 20 years in solving issues for clients. And I hope that you will begin to see or actually also adopt it as your framework as well as we take some of the complexity away and focus your attention on the core concepts. Lean, I love because it's elegant and it's simple. The tools are easy to understand, the tools are easy to use, and when I'm focused on just solving an issue around speed, it's my go-to platform for, for resolving that issue. And you will see over time that, and there's a reason why this is happening, that Lean and Six Sigma has, have come to merge with one another because again, Business problems are not unidimensional. We're not just gonna fix one issue. So when you're designing a new process or when you're overcoming a quality issue, you may also be trying to overcome an issue related to process efficiency and process speed, and that's the strength of Lean. That's why some of these methodologies are coming together is because their strengths and weaknesses in some ways are complementing one another. Going to why I love Agile, is because when you think about these large scale projects, which are everywhere in companies, it is incredibly difficult to keep the attention of executives and key stakeholders because everybody wants to see short term gains. And that's exactly what Agile delivers for you, delivers short term gains towards a much larger goal that you may not get to for another 18 months or two years. So its iterative nature not only allows you to keep the attention of executives, but to also constantly validate and confirm for yourself that what you're building is actually moving you towards the right direction and meeting the expectation and the requirements that was set forth for you at the very beginning. That's agile. Design thinking, what I love about it is that it allows the collaboration of a cross-functional team to come up with an idea. I, you probably have seen this, that there are lots of solutions, creative solutions that people come up with, but then they hit a roadblock when it goes in front of legal or compliance or HR, I have no idea. Some department will ultimately raise a red flag saying, as elegant as that solution, we cannot implement it for such and such reason. So having that cross-functional team in a way allows you to mitigate risks in your design or in your ideas. So that really is a strength and the reason why I also love design thinking. I hope this summary helped you differentiate between these methodologies, but to also understand hopefully when to use them, their strengths and weaknesses. And over time, I hope to help you love these methodologies just as much as I love them. Again, I will focus your attention on the best practices and the tools that are most powerful in each one so that you can 
hone your creative problem solving skills as quickly as possible. And over time you will begin to see, I promise you, that when you're solving a problem, you're not just gonna focus on the Six Sigma or the Lean or Agile, but rather you're going to steal concepts from each one and merge them depending on the issue that you're trying to solve. And that is what creates a creative problem solver is that you can now use multiple platforms because of the knowledge that you've gained to solve a problem. Again, I will post this grid and if you have comments, thoughts or suggestions, please don't forget to post them below. We use that information to help us figure out how to change the content or how to deliver content that is of value to you. Thank you again and I look forward to seeing you soon.